Okay, guys, we are live. We're back. We're back for week five. Week five of our uh, development skills for employment, personal fitness, and well-being course as well. Um, so if you uh, keep the ball rolling on last week, we're going to be just continuing looking at our circuit cards and getting some ideas for that circuit and then um, starting to get some actually on paper and pen down um, and, yes, yeah, start to make some um, progress with those circuit cards as well as some of the exercises we can put on them. Um, I hope everybody has had a lovely long weekend. If they have had a long weekend and enjoyed the Jubilee, um, yeah, it's just a shame the weather didn't hang about. We're back to grey and misery over here today, but we uh, we push on. Um, right, guys, right. So um, just a little bit of a recap on last week's session then before we go too far. Um, so where we started last week, we were looking at... Um, so we had a bit of a recap again on the, the benefits of circuit training, why so many people um, train in that style. Um, and, and like I say, some of the some of the huge benefits of training in a way where you'll do one exercise straight into the next, into the next, without necessarily resting for very long in between. Um, so, of course, go back and check out last week's um, session if you want to have a little recap on that and touch up on that again. Um, but the main thing we looked at last week was um, different types of fitness equipment. So we were looking at things like um cones ladders battle ropes medicine balls barbells dumbbells kettlebells um amongst many many others so um yeah we were we were looking at bits of equipment and then a handful of exercises we can maybe do with that equipment so you know so for example a dumbbell We've got a weight in each hand. We can do bicep curls. We can do overhead press. We can do tricep extension. Um, and those are just, just three exercises with one bit of kit. So as we sort of looked at last week, we realized that there's not really a, a right and a wrong exercise to do with a lot of pieces of equipment. It's just picking a body part that you want to work um, and making sure that that is where the tension is when you're lifting the weights. Um yeah, and, and sort of going from there and, and making sure that that exercise in particular is done with good form and technique. Um, that's that's, that's um, obviously one of the key points, that, that proper technique and knowing how it should be done. So that brings us to our circuit cards, doesn't it? And, and, and that is where all that information is going to be. So if you or if somebody that was in your class, your fitness class, got to that station at the circuit, looked down at the card, and goes, right, I know what I'm doing now. Yeah, in terms of what the exercise is called, what equipment I'm using, what muscles um, I can expect to use uh, and recruit during that exercise. Um, yeah, so the equipment that we're going to need, even a picture of the exercise, you know, even if it's a couple of little pictures, that's your start point, that's your end point. Back to the start point again. Yeah, for an overhead press. So brief description, so a couple of sentences, um, or even a couple of bullet points, a sentence or two on how to actually do each exercise. Um, health and safety considerations, so things to think about, like are the clips on? Um, is is it dropping to bits? Is the, is the resistance band going to snap when you pull it? That sort of thing as well. So using them safely, um, because if we are exercising safely, we're going to um, avoid injuries and we can be consistent. Really. Um, and then... One big point as well that we spent a little bit of time talking about last week and will again this week was how to actually um, modify the circuit to make it easier or harder depending on individuals and their mobility levels and any particular needs that they might have as well. Um, so, for example, can you make the weight heavier or lighter? Um, could you increase the range that you're moving through? Yeah, so if someone's struggling to do a full squat, then you have them just do half a squat um, and, and start them off that way, for example. Um, or if someone's managing with a full squat, okay, can they go even deeper? You know, so there, there, there are certain ways to um, progress or, or regress an exercise depending on what the exercise is. Um, you might reduce the amount of time that you do it for, Um and it might actually depend on the reason why you need to progress or regress it as well. Is it that someone 
isn't fit enough, you know, so do they need to do five and rest and five and rest? Um, is it because someone's not strong enough? Yes, the weight needs to be lighter. Um, if it's because of an injury or a disability or whatever, that modification might be totally different again. Yeah, so just have... Um, and so, so having that on the circuit card is as beneficial to you as it is for the client while you're trying to remember as many ways as possible to make it easier or harder because you might need to do it in more than one way for more than one reason. Yeah, and that, that comes with time. Truth be told, that comes with time and that comes with experience. But we do need to have an idea how to make um, exercise easier or harder so it feels manageable but challenging as well at the same time. I can't imagine any of us want our exercise to feel too easy or too hard all the time. Um, okay then, so because we've looked at fitness equipment, um, we kind of need to look at the other side of that coin then because the circuit isn't always going to use equipment in every single exercise. And um, quite, the, quite the opposite, actually. I've found that a lot of circuits that I've done over the years um, – especially through lockdown and stuff like that, because, of course, we talk circuit training is good for on the go, um, or I guess the opposite of on the go when you're working from home. Um, but when you've got time restrictions, space restrictions, equipment uh, sort of restrictions as well, and the equipment that you've got, circuits tend to involve a lot of body weight exercises. Um, so we need to have an idea of what exercises we might do with equipment what exercises you might not need any equipment for, um, and the balance or the blend of these two types of exercises that we're going to put in our circuit. For example, if we're doing 10 stations in our circuit, do we make five of them with equipment and five of them not? Um, do, we do, do we make more of a focus on cardio weight, cardio weight, cardio weight, and... Obviously, do mainly sort of body weight on the cardio, weight uh, equipment on the weight uh, sections. So, from my experience, I would say that that might come down from that might come down to what do you want the main benefit or takeaway of your set of your session to be or of, of your circuit? So, do you want um, do you want your circuit to really challenge people on a cardiovascular level? Um, and get them out of breath, or are you trying to pick on a particular muscle or body uh, or muscle group um, and hit them over and over and over again and really tire them out? Because those those decisions might just change or inform the way that we um, plan our circuit as well. But the beauty of this, guys, is that this circuit could be whatever you want it to be. Um, we have a couple of things to consider and a couple of things to make sure that we include, um, including some some uh, equipment exercises, but this is your circuit, guys. We can do with it what you want. Um, so, guys, today we're looking at bodyweight exercises then. So we'll be looking at the same information again. So this might be a little bit more actually straightforward than last week's session because, like I say, with a dumbbell, there's a million different exercises you can do, so there's not necessarily a right or a wrong way um, to use that dumbbell. Whereas with body weight, the only equipment you're using is your body weight, yeah, um, and, and, and is your body. So when it comes to picking an exercise, we're going to be talking specifically about that exercise, if that makes sense, yeah. Um, whereas with a dumbbell, we could have been talking about front raise, side raise, bicep curl, overhead press. Today, looking at body weight, if we're looking at a burpee, we're looking at a burpee, yeah. Right, guys. Okay. Um, so, yeah, just to recap what we'll be looking at on those circuit cards. Name of exercise. So, as we're going through these exercises, these bodyweight exercises that we're going to talk about, we want to be thinking about these bits of information, yeah? So, maybe even um, if you've got a pen and a bit of paper handy, even just uh, grab a screenshot or a picture of the screen there. Those are the things that we want to be looking out for and listening out for and thinking about while we go through these um, circuits and go through these exercises. So the name of the exercise, the muscles that it uses, a picture of the exercise as well, brief description, so a couple of bullet points, how to actually do the exercise, 
health and safety considerations and again how to progress and regress um, if we want to make it easier or, or harder. Okay then guys, so body weight exercises or calisthenics you might hear them called. If you've ever come across that word before, that's all that is. <clears throat> so, um, so body weight exercises is one of the most important benefits of body weight exercises is its ability to improve your cardiovascular endurance and muscle strength at the same time as well. Yeah, um, and your muscular endurance as well. Um, let's get that in there, actually. Cardiovascular um, endurance, muscular endurance, and muscular, yeah, and muscle strength all at once. Um, so frequently changing your position um, keeps your heart rate elevated. So that's what I'm saying. You do one into another into another, um, and it keeps your heart rate nice and high because you're not getting that chance to get a deep breath and recover. Um, so, yeah, uh, it keeps your heart rate elevated while body weight and gravity work together to strengthen muscles. So kind of what I was talking about last week, um, depending on your body position and the way that gravity is affecting you, that's going to change what muscle you uh, strengthen, really, or that muscle that you work. Um, so, for example, if I do, um, an, if I'm sort of straight like this, pushing up, do an overhead press, this muscle here is going to work, yeah? However, if I um, this way to do this, if I lean forward, so my chest is more parallel to the floor, and start raising my arm, it's going to be this muscle on the back. Yeah, that does that movement. Yeah, so it's the way that we're moving against gravity, really, or, or resistance, which is what gravity is, um, that's going to change the way that our body's challenged. Yeah. So again, if I stand and do that. That works one group of muscles. If I was to stand forward and do the same thing, it's going to work a different group of muscles. That's not even really an exercise, I don't think. Just uh, giving you an example of how changing our body position is going to change um, the way that gravity affects it, really. And that's all we're doing. So working against gravity, and um, so working against gravity is going to help strengthen those muscles, that resistance. Um, not resting for very long is going to keep our heart rate high and keep us burning more calories um, and getting that oxygen around the body uh, to those muscles. But depending on how long our circuit is or how long the, the set is, we can actually get some muscular endurance in there as well. If you were just going to go to the gym by yourself and do your typical sort of uh, regular workout, you might sit down and you might do 10 of them. Yeah, and your body gets used to doing 10. So if you ever ask your body to do 15 or 20 of those, that's a bit of a bit of a challenge to it. It's used to stop at 10. That makes sense. Um, whereas if your circuit or your timer is going on for 30, 45, 60 seconds, you're gonna do so many more that so much more than 10. Yeah, you might do 20, 30, and that helps increase the endurance because of course that's how long a muscle can last. So again, thinking about certain exercises and thinking about how long your circuit time is going to be, think about the exercises that you're asking people to do. Asking people for 30 seconds of press-ups is one thing. Asking people to do one minute of press-ups with good technique and good form is, is totally different, of course. Um, so thinking about the exercises that we're doing and making sure people can stick with good form. Yeah, um, circuits in general. Um, if I was doing any exercise with a weight, I would make sure there was lighter weight. So if they got tired um, as they went on, they could come down to that lighter weight and think about their form. Yeah. If you get tired and your muscle starts to tire out, if you don't drop that weight, your form's going to go out the window because you're going to find other ways of moving that weight um, that help that muscle out. Yeah. Now, um, okay, guys. So what body weight exercises? Have we got there? And of course, as always, pop any ideas in the chat if you've come across anything before. Um, if you've got any, if you've got any ideas um, or anything that you've come across before, 
Um, so when it comes to um, body weight, exercises in general, actually, exercises in general. Um, when it comes to what we call an isolation exercise, which works one muscle, for example, a bicep curl, the only muscle that's working in there is this one, the bicep. If I do an isolation muscle, uh, exercise, that burns a small amount of calories to make that happen. If I do a much bigger exercise that works multiple muscles at once, like a squat, all of a sudden I'm burning more calories because I'm asking my body to do more at one time, if that makes sense. Yeah, so lower body exercises tend to work a lot of muscle, yeah? Your thighs, um, your hamstrings, your bum muscles, um, your quadriceps are the biggest muscle group in the body. So your thigh muscles are the biggest muscle group in the body. And the glute, your bum muscles, are the biggest single muscles in the body, yeah? So in working our lower body, we're, we're working so much of that muscle all at once, which burns extra calories and it is harder. You do 30 seconds of bicep curls and 30 seconds of squats and you'll feel the difference in your heart rate because of how your body's been working harder, um, which is why squats and lunges are going to be two of the most common body weight exercises you're going to come across. Now, yeah, you can do them with weights. You can do them with a barbell on your back. You can do them with a dumbbell in each hand. You can do them with a kettlebell or a medicine ball held into your chest. And you can do your squats. You can do lunges. You can lunge forward, backwards. You can travel um, down the length of the gym if you want to. Um, now, they work mainly the same muscle groups, to be honest. So let's, um, let's start with the squat. Let's start with the squat first. So the squat, as I sort of mentioned earlier on, the um, squat's going to be one of the most, I say, popular, depends on your common um, lower body exercises. So this squat, see if I can get us a little zoom in again as well. Zoom. It's 400%. I might just do this. That's better. That's better. Um, all right, guys. Okay, so to start us off, We've got this gentleman on the left doing a squat. So, in terms of um, what he's doing, he's got his feet about hip width apart. He's got his arms out in front of him, um, pointing straight ahead, not down into the floor. Yeah, that's going to work as like a reference point for him. You don't have to do that. You can put your arms folded. You can put them behind your back if you want. Um, it's entirely up to you. Maybe it's even behind your head, just make sure that you're not leaning forward. That's the main benefit of the fingers pointing out. Because you're going to try and keep your chest up as you squat. You're not going to lean forward as you squat. You're going to keep your chest up. So if your fingers stay pointing straight ahead, you know that your chest isn't coming forward. If you find yourself pointing at the floor, it means that your technique um, has, has, has suffered a little bit. Um, so yeah, you notice that even when he's at the bottom of the squat, his fingers are still pointing straight ahead. So he's kept his chin up, his back's nice and flat, even when he's in the squat, so he hasn't got that rounded, arched back um, sort of shape. Really important with squats, he's kept his heels on the floor and is digging through his heels on the way back up. Yeah, so feet hip width apart, weight in your heels, keep your back flat, arms straight out in front of you, Bend your knees and start to lower your bum towards the floor, keeping your chest upright. Yeah. Come down to about 90 degrees. Um, and then, like I say, drive through your heels and return to that starting point again. Yeah, so that would be one full squat. Nice and simple. Um, no weight needed. Um, of course, I would always have somebody do body weight exercises before they do a weight inversion. If somebody can't squat body weight, technique-wise or confidence or whatever, um, the last thing they need is trying to do it with a bar on their back or whatever. So um, I tend to let people get used to body weight exercises first anyway. Um, on the exercises that you can, of course, there is no kettlebell swing without a kettlebell. 
Yeah, so certain exercises where you can do them body weight first, I'll let people do it. Um, and have actually had people do the kettlebell swing movement without the kettlebell there. Um, more as like a couple of practice reps than a full set though. Um, okay then, so that is a squat. So, squat muscles do we think that we're working here? So we've got, um, as I mentioned earlier on, we've got the quadriceps. So the front of your thigh, big muscle group. It's going to work, um, again, going to burn a lot of calories um, and really start to bring that heart rate up. Um, it's going to work your glutes as well. So we've got quadriceps, we've got glutes, are going to be the main two muscles that you work in a squat. Um, so we've got that. So we've got our description. We've got our. Um, we know what muscles we're using. Of course, a little diagram could just be a stick person doing exactly this point A and point B. Um, so yeah, use these if you want um, to get you some ideas for your to, uh, little pictures as well. Name of the exercise is, of course, just going to be a regular squat. There are so many variations. There's sumo squats where your legs are wider. There's straight leg, um, straight legged sort of um, no that's deadlifts. Um, split squat where you've got one foot elevated, be it your front foot or your back foot. I've seen uneven squats where you've got one foot elevated, um, and of course these days social media you can go online and everybody's trying to make the squat look a little bit different, isn't it? So you go and look at look at their page. Um, okie dokie dokie. Um, okay then, guys. So um, that is a as a squat. Um, in terms of progressions and regressions. Um, you can, of course, make the um, – the first place I would go would just be um, to reduce how low somebody is squatting. And maybe if they can't get quite down to this low, can they get as close to it as they can? Um, of course, in terms of body weight exercises, um, another thing I've done before to make things a little bit easier, um, if you put, like – a little weight, like the flat plates or anything really, um, maybe it's maybe it's an inch an inch thick under your heels. It can actually help you get that full range on your squat, because if you go to squat, sometimes you feel your heels are trying to pick themselves up, um, and then you'll find yourself on the balls of your foot, and that's not where you want to be in the squat. So you want to keep your heels down. And sometimes you might find that if you get to a certain point, your heels try to come up, you put something under your heels, then it keeps them elevated, but you can still push through them. Um, if you did want to look that up, I'm just going to double check. I'm sure I've heard that referred to. Um, let's have a look. There's like a sissy squat before. But I have also seen different machines called a sissy squat machine. Um, let's have a look. Heel elevated squat. Um, so if I can show you, it's going to be very much like that. So you've got your heels up. That means that You've got the mobility now to squat. You don't have to worry about your heels staying on the floor, but you can also still push through your heels and you're not pushing through your toes and going to cause yourself any knee problems there. So that, that's that's one of, that's always been one of my go-to ways to um, modify a squat. Oh, all right, guys, bear with us. I'm getting the, uh, the old Zoom meeting saying that there's only so long left and the timer, I can't figure out why. Hmm. Right, guys. Okay, so that is... Um, so in terms of making a squat harder, um, I would say focus on um, increasing the range. You may be going to have a weight or something to give people to make it a little bit harder. Um, you could make it a squat hold where they come down and hold the squat for the whole time, um, which is 
which is like that, that, that next step up as well. And those muscles are under constant tension. Because at the top of the squat, when you sort of, you don't lock your legs out, but you straighten your legs, those quadriceps get a little bit of a break. Yeah. Um, whereas if you come down and hold that position that he's in, those muscles are going to work throughout the whole set. So that will be um, a little bit harder. You can even um, build your way up to, and I know it's going to change from person to person, um, to do a pistol squat, which, believe it or not, um, is a squat with one leg. So we're thinking along those sorts of lines, yeah. So straight leg and then actually standing up from there as well. Um, absolutely solid, about one of the hardest bodyweight exercises I've ever found at pistol squat. So if there's anybody out there doing them, congratulations. Um, make sure that form's good. Watch those knees. And then that fair play, absolutely fair play. Um, right, guys. Okay, so bearing in mind everything that we've just talked about with the squat, the muscles used, technique, um, I'm going to give you just a minute to think about um, the lunge um, and how... There we go, there we go. I knew we'd get there in the end. How the... Um, lunge might be coached um, what muscles do you think it works um, how do you think you might make it harder or easier I'm going to give you just a minute to think about that um, while I try and figure out what's going on with my zoom So what muscles do we think a lunge is going to work? How can we make it easier? How can we make it harder? What health and safety things might we need to think about, actually? And then we'll revisit the squat um, and talk about those health and safety as well. Although um, body weight, the main thing is keep your heels, um, heels down. So that might be a little bit of a clue for this one as well. What do we think, guys? Right, guys, right. Get the old tech support on route. Um, okay, so uh, a lunge. So we know the name, straightforward lunge. Um, just looks as though it was a step forward. So if you've never done a lunge before, seen a lunge done, um, what you're doing, you're starting, same again, same position as a squat, feet hip width apart. But then what you're going to do, instead of bending your knees, you're going to take one step forward and then start to lower that back knee down towards the floor. So you're going to bend them both um, and you're ultimately going to end up with a 90 degree-ish bend at both knees. Um, from there, you are probably going to push back through the front leg Um, back through the through the front leg, back to that starting point again. Um, so you've lunged forward, you've pushed with your front foot, and then your feet are back next to each other again. Yeah. So you've gone from you've gone from this position, taking a step forward into this position, bend both knees, and then you come back to this stand and start position as well. Um, 
Alrighty, yo guys, right, I am um, just waiting on Haven. Um, I've got less than a minute in the old Zoom chat, so if we end up having to take a little, um, go to a little break screen, which I'm sure we're going to just while we get this sorted out, um, have a little bit of a...
There we go. Yeah, we're back in business. Back in business. Thank you as always to our uh, amazing Daniel Freeze tech support. Um, right, guys. So where were we? So we were having just a little think about um this this lunge and certain ways we can make it easier or, or harder. So again, one of the one of the um, go to ways to make something like this harder is to give somebody a way to do it with. Um, just because we're talking about them body weight doesn't necessarily mean that they always have to stay body weight. Um, see lunges done with a dumbbell in each hand, with a bar on the back, just like a squat, um, maybe like a kettlebell or a medicine ball or something held into the chest. Um, so lots of ways we can use weight to make it um, harder. Yeah. Uh, another way we can make it harder, um, depending on the individual, you might want to change it round. Um, so instead of a step forward and bend both knees, it's a step backwards and bend both knees, if that makes sense. So instead of stepping this foot forward into the lunge, she might have stepped this foot backwards into the lunge. So put your foot behind you, bend your knee, nearly touches the floor just like this and stand at the position again. You know, so we've got forward lunges and reverse lunges. You might want to do traveling lunges where you're just going to walk in a straight line. You do it like a lunge, come forward, lunge, come forward um, and get that sort of constant um, movement going, keep the heart rate higher. You might choose to do 10 lunges on one leg and then 10 on the other. So they're not getting that rest while the other one's working. So you can cut down on that rest time. Um, and of course, ways that you can make it easier would be to um, reduce the, the bending at maybe both knees, depending on the individual. If, if it's a knee problem, you might want to... Um, I actually find that the pressure on the knees is better with a reverse lunge. So if you step backwards, uh, rather than stepping forward, planting your foot, putting all that weight on your front leg, um, step backwards. Um, I tend to find there's a bit nicer on the knees. You might, um, if it's a balanced thing, you might actually let them come all the way down and rest that knee on the floor just so they can get their balance, get, st get stable again before they come back up. Like I say, you might go the other way and you might just have them bend the front knee and keep the back leg relatively straight. Um, again, it depends why we're making these progressions or regressions. Um, like I say, injury and mobility problems are going to need probably different modifications. Um, but yeah, guys, that, that is a lunge. Um, again, with the arms, put them out to the side, cross them over your chest, hands on your hips if you want. Um, depends if you're doing anything else as well, of course. But again, um, really good. Not full body, but almost the entirety of your lower body. If you think you've got thigh working, bum working, sometimes hamstrings a little bit as well, sometimes calves. Um, that's almost your entire lower body there working in one movement, which is going to challenge you so much harder than doing a front raise, which works one muscle. Yeah, so those bigger exercises um, are going to help you work um, more muscle at once. Um, right, guys, yeah. So um, that's progressions and regressions. In terms of um, health and safety, really it all comes down to good technique. It all comes down to good technique. Bar, making sure that we're wearing appropriate clothes and appropriate footwear. Um, like I say, making sure that we're using good technique. So when, when he starts to push up out of this squat, we're making sure that those knees don't buckle towards each other, yeah? Bend in and shake in and out like um, like Shaggy and Scooby have just seen a ghost, yeah? Shake your legs. Um, we need, we, you want your knees to stay over your toes, pointing in the same direction as your toes. Um, back flat. Um, and as always, heels down, and the same applies with a lunge as well. You want to, you want your weight in your heels, not on your toes, because when you weight in your toes, load that pressure forward, and um, can put it onto that kneecap as well. Yeah. 
um, okay, then that's okay. So that is um, squatting and lunging. Um, again, you can do sideways lunges as well. Um, just work different parts of um, different parts of the muscle, really. Um, all right, guys. Okie dokie. Um, spinning on. Let's have a look. So we've done lower body exercises. If you wanted a couple of ideas, and then a couple of um, core exercises, you could say, um, or abs exercises. Now, this is a really good chance to point out the difference between those two exercises, actually, um, or those two different types of exercise. Um, Sit-ups are an exercise for your abs, your abdominals, which is, as we know, the, the, the layer of muscle that sits on the outside of your stomach. So essentially where that six-pack is, it is your six-pack. And everybody has them. It's just a case of how visible they are, um, which of course comes from their body composition and stuff like that. But everybody has abdominals. They are the muscle that help us flex backwards at the waist, uh, at, at the torso, sorry, and flex forward as well. If you're laid down with your shoulders on the bed and you sit up and raise your shoulders, it's your abs that have worked. That's not a million miles away from a sit-up sort of movement, is it? So I lay down in a controlled way, use these muscles in your stomach to lift your shoulders off the floor. Yeah. So that's an abdominal exercise. This exercise here will work your abs. Yeah. But then we've got planking, which is a core exercise, which is easily um, confused with abs. Because you see abs and core used sort of interchangeably. Whereas core exercises work your abs and more really, or, or certain different parts of your core. Because in a plank, all you're doing is on your toes or knees, more on that in a little minute, um, and on your elbows, um, you are trying to keep your whole body in a nice straight line. So you want to be aligned from your heel right the way up through your knees, through your hips, up through your torso, through your shoulders, uh, and your neck, really. So everything in a nice straight line, locked out. And that's where we're talking about resisting gravity. Gravity is trying to pull you down towards the floor. All um, There's so much muscle working to make sure that doesn't happen. So your abs are working again, the, the sort of outside of your stomach. But with the plank, we've got your shoulders working as well. We've got your back muscles working. We've got your leg muscles and your bum muscles working to keep you in that nice straight line. So that's the difference really between a core exercise and an abs exercise. An abs exercise will only work the outer layer of muscle on your stomach really. Core exercises is about more. It's about your whole trunk really. Um, uh, it's about your the side of your t uh, torso, the back of your torso, the front of your torso and how strong it is and all those uh, deep lying internal muscles as well. You die around your pelvic floor and all of that sort of thing. Um, so big difference there between abs and core training, yeah? If you go to our abs class, you would expect to do all exercises that work your abs. A core class is going to work a bigger range of muscles, including the abs. Um, okay, so back down to break, breaking these down and looking at them individually. So back to sit-ups. So with the sit-up, we have got, um, we know it's an abdominal exercise. We've got an idea of what the exercise looks like now for drawing our little stick people or our proper diagrams if you're a little bit more arty than I am. If you're any more arty than I am, let's be honest. Um, by all means, go for it if you want to draw some uh, proper in-depth diagrams. Um, I just always stuck with me stick, for, me stick folks. So we've got an ab exercise. Obviously, works our abdominals. Um, what else do we have? We've got the name of the exercise. It's a sit-up. Um, we know that um, a little description. You could say, um, sit your bum on the floor uh, with your feet, uh, with your legs slightly bent, feet on the floor. You whinging that dog. Um, lay down so your shoulders and head rest on the floor. Put your hands on your temple or across your shoulders uh, to get them out of the way and use your um or 
Start to bring your shoulders up towards your knees. Yeah, so from a lay down position, bring your shoulders up towards your knees um, like you're sitting up out of bed um, on a morning. Uh, that could be our little description of how to do a sit up. Um, so beyond that, what else did we need? Well, we needed um, health and safety considerations as well. So as always, make sure that there's a um, somewhat comfy comfy enough surface you don't want someone to be really uncomfortable sitting on their coccyx or their uh, like on that on their bony uh, sort of tailbone i've had people before that can't do sit-ups because of that bone um at the bottom of the back um you might find that you want to just get somebody to sit up lean back until they feel their abs engage and then come forward again yeah you might not want them to come all the way from the floor you might just sit them up like almost in this sort of position, but then slowly lean them back till they feel the abs kick in and come forward again. So it's like you're not doing the full range, but you're coming back, turning that muscle on, and then using it to come back to a resting position as well. Um, so that's a big one with health and safety. You want to make sure that you've got your hands on your temples or across your shoulders, anywhere really that's not at the back of your head, arching your neck, um, and potentially even pulling yourself forward um, and I've even seen sit-ups done where people put their arms above their head and then throw them forward for like momentum and that just takes away from the work that your abs have got to do as well so um, that's the technique thing as much as a health and safety thing um, but yeah making sure that you're not trying to do sit-ups with a properly arched back with your neck hunched forward and you can't get good blood flow and, and all of that as well and, and a good oxygen flow as well with the breathing you don't want to constrict everything um, so that's the big one with sit-ups, really. In terms of, again, regressions, don't have someone start on the floor and sit themselves up. Have someone start at the seating point and slowly lean themselves back. Um, that would be the way that I would make a sit-up a little bit more easier, a little bit more manageable. Um, you know, it might be something as simple as sitting on their, sitting on their feet for them or giving them a, like um, a kettlebell or a weight or something to wedge their feet under. Um, I've done that before. Um, that can help out as well. Um, in terms of making them harder, you might want to, um, again, give them a little weight to hold across their chest. Um, what I have done before as well is from like a seated position, they come sit forward and push above their head. You could even try and get them to do the whole sit up with something above their head. Um, it's probably going to be really light at first, or maybe it's just their hands that would make it harder because you're increasing how long your body is, if that makes sense, from the point where you're bending um, at the waist. So even putting your hands above your head um, is going to make a sit-up harder. Um, so a couple of different ways we can make them easier, harder. Um, i trying to think if there's any other ways that I've sort of modified sit-ups in the past. You can change them up a little bit. So instead of just sitting up, they sit up and they bring their knee to the uh, elbow to the opposite knee sort of thing. So you're coming up and across, you know. Get to the point where certain exercises, um, a regression or a progression becomes a different exercise, you know. Um, if sit-ups are too easy, you might say, right, okay, we're going to do um, cross crunches, which is what I used to call those elbows across. Um and you might just have an idea of what exercise is the next one up rather than making that specific exercise harder, if that makes sense. Um, okay, so that's probably um, that's a lot of the big stuff with sit-ups, really. Um, in terms of regressions, progressions, health and safety, obviously muscles used. Um, so let's move on and look at planking, of course. We mentioned earlier on it's more of a full-body exercise Yes, you've got your abs working, but your glutes are going to engage, your shoulders are going to work, um, and some of those other back muscles as well, your traps included. So plankton's a good, um, almost full-body exercise, really. And like we mentioned when we were looking at squats and lunges, the more muscle we can work at a time, the more um, we're going to challenge the body, and the more it's going to adapt as well. Yeah. So planking, core exercise, so it works beyond just the abdominals. Um, so like we said, onto your toes, onto your elbows, 
get the rest of your body in a nice straight line and keep it elevated up off the floor. You don't want your bum to be too high. You don't want your hips to be too low and dipping. Um, that either makes it easier and defeats the purpose, or if your hips dip too low, you're actually going to be putting more strain on your lower back than you need to, and you can you can pick up injuries as well. Um, so that is uh, that's your bog standard plank, really. So that's how to get into a plank position. You know, down on the floor, get on your elbows, onto your toes, uh, and hold your body in a nice straight line. Um, stick men, uh, stick women should be pretty easy to do because you're not moving anywhere during this exercise. You know, some diagrams are going to need a start point and an end point. Like you sit up one, plank in. You just get in the position and you hold it as well. Um, okay, so muscles used. Name of the exercise. We know that there's no equipment. Um, so health and safety, like I say, as always, good technique. Make sure that you're um, doing the exercise with good form and you're not putting pressure on areas of your body where you're not supposed to be doing a particular exercise. Um, okay. As always, I would make sure, obviously, that you're on a suitable surface and that you're not going to get a lot of pain, um, like, you know, kneeling on something or being on your elbows on, on something as well. Um, it's mainly That's mainly the main one for, for health and safety, I would say. Obviously, as always, making sure that you've got enough space to do stuff. Um, in terms of regressions, in terms of regressions, how could we make a plank easier? Um, arguably coming onto your palms rather than elbows might make it easier. Now I find this, it sort of differs from person to person. I have found that if, um, I find it easier to do a plank on my elbows, other people find it easy to do a plank on their palms and no idea why. Um, so that might change from person to person, but you can also, of course, um, adjust the lever length or how long your body is from your pivot point um, by changing where the pivot point is. So in this case, instead of being on your toes, drop your knees. Still from your knees up to your chin, nice straight line, but you're reducing the length of your body. You're reducing how much of your body is resisting gravity because from the knee down, won't be. Yeah? Um, so that makes it a little bit more manageable. I've had people do planks um, just on their knees before. I've even had people come into like a box press-up position, so literally onto all fours, um, and then slowly walk your hands forward till you get to the point where you feel your abs engage, and again, just walk it back from there. Yeah. Um, so almost like a walkout. And if you've done my online abs workout on the Media Sever YouTube channel, you'll know all about walkouts by now. If not, guys, that is um, a good place to go. And I'll mention it again at, uh, at the end of the session. But don't forget our um, YouTube playlist um, of workouts and, and different exercise videos for inspiration um, for your circuit cards as well, because I used obviously very little equipment. It was a lot of body weight exercises for most of those videos. Um, and I've always made sure that there's progressions, regressions, and coached as well as I can remotely through Zoom um, and through video recordings, try to coach proper technique as well. So don't forget about those guys, check them out. Uh, they will be linked at the end of the day session as well. Um, so no worries there. But those, those are the big ones with a plank in terms of progressions or regressions. Um, like I say, making it harder. I've even done things like um, lifting a foot. Yeah. So you've only got one foot on the floor and you're planking. I've done it before where instead of having your elbows that way, you'll turn your elbows inwards or you'll turn your arm inwards, lift the other one out of the way and that, you've just got one arm on the floor and you're using your forearm like a bar. I think that's called a hammer plank. I'm going to have a look now. Let's have a look. Quick little hammer plank. Let's 
I can't find if that's the official name, but we're talking along those sorts of lines, yeah. So arm across the body, one arm around the back, or we could even go with a... Um, let's have a look. Let's have a look. So when we're talking about raising the foot as well, that's the sort of thing that we're on about, just lifting that back foot. It just challenges, it changes up your weight distribution and it challenges your body in just a totally different way because um, you've got different muscles working to um, different, different lengths, really. Um, right, guys. So, yeah, in terms of making a plank easier or harder, those are the main ways that I've um, looked to do that over the years. Um, oh guys, spinning on. Right, so we have done um, a couple of low body exercises, a couple of sort of core, torso, midriff exercises. Um, let's get a look at some um, upper body exercises as well. So when it comes to upper body, um, with body weight exercises, there are only so many, really. Um, especially without, like, it's it's arguable. If you were to do um, pull ups, you still need a bar to do pull ups with. Yes, it's just body weight. You're not moving any other weight, but you still need some equipment. If that makes sense. Um, so when it comes to um, upper body exercises, body weight, a lot of them are going to be pressing exercises because we've got push and we've got pull. Um, it's really easy to push your own body weight. Getting yourself in a position to pull your own body weight is a little bit harder without some equipment. Um, so these two that we're looking at here, and um, let's go with the one on the left first. So we've got just a regular old push-up. Yeah, push up, press up. You're going to hear it named different things. Um, it's the same thing as far as I'm concerned. I know we lose a little bit of picture quality there when we zoom in, but hopefully that just gives you a bit of a clearer picture. If by some um, unlikely circumstance, you've never seen a press up before, um, be it in movies, TV, um, whatever, flicking past, videos and influences these days on social media um you know almost to the point where i want to say well done if you've gone this far without seeing a press up um so press up push up whatever you want to call it um the main muscle that it's going to work is your pectorals so your chest muscles yeah it's kind of um the same as you know the exercise where they lay on the bench lay it down with the bar bring it down to the chest and then push it up again it's a, it's a body weight version of that. You challenge the muscle in the same way. You stretch the muscle in the same way. So you're working your pectorals, your deltoids, and to an extent, your triceps a little bit as well. Yeah, so the back of your arm, the front of your shoulder, and across your chest are all getting work there with the press-up. So obviously, the starting position is, is pretty much a plank. Yeah, so you can come into that plank position on your toes, um, with your hands around about shoulder shoulder level, maybe it's a little bit wider than shoulder width though, yeah? So shoulder level and a little bit wider than shoulder width, yeah? From there, you're going to bend your elbows, lower your chest to the floor, push back up and return to that starting point, yeah? That would be how I would sort of coach or give people the description for a press-up. What you might have them do is lay down flat, face down, put their hands by their side where they feel comfortable and strongest, and from there, push all the way back up. Yeah? Come all the way down and rest again to the point where you can even move your hands, chest laid on the floor, and then put them back and drive back to that start point again. Yeah? Um, just different ways of doing, um, doing the same thing, really. So, we know what muscles we're using. Delts, pecs, triceps, mainly. Um, we know how to draw our diagram. 
We've got a little description. We know that there's no equipment used. You might choose to use exercise mats, depending on where you are doing the exercise. In terms of health and safety, again, I would just make sure make sure that the floor is suitable. Um, for press ups and kneeling on and putting your palms on and stuff like that. Um, I think probably worth checking out with all of these in like, in general circuit training in general. Um, I'm going to want to think about dehydration as well. It just just occurred to us that they're out there doing this in the sun by the looks. Um, so yeah, we're always thinking about hydration as well. Um, so in terms of how do we make it easier or harder? Um, how would you guys think about making a press up easier or harder? Um, there's one kind of out the box solution that you'll see a lot of people do um, in terms of making their press ups easier. And that is just do them on your knees. Instead of being on your toes, do them on your knees. It's exactly the same as a plank. Yeah. If you're moving your whole body weight up and down, it's harder work. If you bend your knees or, or come down to your knees and then you're only moving from, say, that point upwards, you're moving a lot less body weight each time. So coming to your knees makes it easier. Um, another way you can do it, um, a little bit less commonly used, is a um, like a wall press. Maybe, again, thinking about gravity, if you're fully parallel to the floor, and trying to push, that's the most gravity that you're going to have to work against. Can you put your hands against the wall and like sort of lean into it and then press yourself away? Yeah. Can you do that as like a, like as a press up? And then as things, as you get stronger, you know, move your way down the wall and eventually you'll be on the floor. So that's the way we can make press ups a little bit easier as well as just bending your knees. Like I say, put that rest in at the bottom of each one. I feel really helps even just for technique. People, and I found that especially women that have um, got a, had experience doing press-ups before but not being able to do them, they're so nervous on the way down because they know that they have to press, press themselves back up, yeah? So they'll get to the point where, oh, I'm, I'm worried if I go any further, I'm not going to be able to get back up. Whereas they might have made it, yeah? They might only be doing half a rep because they're scared of going all the way and getting stuck. Whereas if you're telling them, look, come all the way, because when you get all the way, you're resting. You're not then trying to push yourself back up at the start. You get that little rest at the end. Yeah. Um, so I find in terms of technique and building people's confidence with them, let them come all the way to the floor, let them rest for a second or two if they need to. Remember, we're working against time in our circuits normally. So, yeah, you might just do 10 of these or 15 of these. But again, if you're working for time and you're doing 60 seconds, the first 10 seconds is going to be greatly greatly different to the the last 10 seconds yeah so um thinking about maintaining that good technique across the whole working set however long that might be um you want your last rep to look as controlled as your first really um okay so that's how we can make press ups easier how we make press ups harder again add some weight can you put um like a weight plate on somebody's back. You know, I've seen, I've seen press-ups done with another person on somebody's back. Um, so we can do um, press-ups with additional weight. Um, you might change up your hand positioning. So different people um, are going to have different strengths and weaknesses. Um, plus it's going to change up the muscle that you work a little bit as well. If you come quite wide, that's going to be a very pec-heavy exercise. If you start to drop those elbows a little bit down to there and come a bit more narrow, it becomes more of a pressing motion with the triceps. Yeah. So we're still working delts, triceps, pecs, but um, different hand positions challenge them in different ways. Exactly the same way as different feet positions are going to challenge you differently on a squat. Yeah. Like a sumo squat or a pistol squat or whatever, like we'd sort of talked about. Um, okay, then, guys. So. Um, what else? How else might we make them harder? So, when it comes to exercises in general, not just body weight exercises, but we have 
what we call plyometric exercises. So nice, simple example of this is instead of doing a squat, doing a squat jump. That jump is explosive because you are pushing from the bottom of the squat through your legs as hard as you can to give you your airtime on your jump as well. You're not just standing up after a squat. You're doing it quick, explosive. You're doing it dynamic. Um, and those types of exercises are just that much harder. Yeah? Again, if you're in the position to, hop yourself up, do five squats. Yeah? Then do five squat jumps where you jump from the bottom of each squat every single time and get as high as you can. And this, again, you'll notice quite a big difference, yeah, um, on how it's challenging your body. So putting in plyometrics makes it harder. Now, of course, we can't do a jump press up, or it's very hard to do a jump press up. Even doing a clap press up is really hard. But that's a form of plyometric because you need to push as hard as you can to not just get to your start point, but to come up, get your hands up, clap them, and get them back down in time. That takes a lot more explosion and a lot more force than just doing the press-up. Yeah? So a clap press-up is about one of the hardest types of press-up you can do, as well as a one-handed press-up. Um Again, uh, let's see if I can get a picture of someone doing a one-handed press-up. If you've not seen one of those before, one-handed press-up. Um, I'll not show you a video, but it can be done. The one-armed press-up can be done. Um, but what I used to like doing as a way of making things a little bit harder, uh, but still manageable, I would meet halfway. So half regular, half clap, press up, kind of. So it would be a press, but then at the top of the press, you would actually raise your arm up into the air. Just one. So the other one's still got your weight on. There's no danger of falling on your face because you haven't got your hands back down in time, like there is with a clap. Um, but it's push with both hands still. One hand up, back down, press again, alternate and do the other one. Yeah? So it's sort of like a press up with a front reach. Yeah? And that just encourages that press to be a little bit more explosive. Um, so we've got that. So we've got um, sort of like a press up with a, with a reach. I used to actually like getting down and doing press ups with a client, but I'd be like opposite them, so mirroring them. And we get to the top of each rep, I'd push, they would push, we'd get to the top, and we'd reach into the middle and high five, hands back to the floor, repeat, swap, and high five the other side. Yeah. Um, so a couple of different ways we can make those um, press-ups a little bit more challenging. Um, okay, okay, okay. Let's have a look then. Let's have a look. So, this could almost be an example of a progression from a regular press up. Because just like I was just kind of talking about, as well as press and reach out in front. Of course, you need to be a little bit more explosive to do kind of like a press into a side reach, yeah, or a, or a T press up, yeah. So I would even sometimes put both of these into a circuit, not back to back, because you work in the same muscle group twice then, yeah. And if your form's starting to struggle after one minute of working those muscles, it certainly will be by the end of two minutes working those muscles, yeah. So what we've got, um, I would have maybe regular press ups and a T press, yeah? So regular press ups, what we just looked at, do a minute of those. In a couple of exercises time, further on in the circuit, you're gonna do T press as well, which needs to be a little bit more explosive and puts a second lot of exercise or volume through, um, through those upper body muscles. Especially if you're quite limited with 
equipment that you've got or lack of equipment, maybe all of your upper body training is going to be body weight. Yeah, you're going to need to think about different variations of press ups and different ways to challenge your upper body as well. Now, this is, like I say, just one example again a T press. So you press up out of your um, press up and you do one hand pivot, reach for the sky. Um, and then obviously both hands to the floor and go again and repeat. Um, that brings your abs in a little bit more, but it's still mainly an upper body exercise. It's probably going to challenge your shoulders a little bit more as well because you're balancing on one arm. Um, but you'll notice even as the upper body's twisted, the lower body stays kind of square onto the floor. Yeah, so you get the twist at the waist and not just chucking your whole body over, if that makes sense. Um, so T press up. Um, again, slightly regular press up with more like a, a reach, reach for the sky at the top. Um, so yeah, just kind of like a different variation of a of a press up, really. Um, and again, health and safety. Just check the floor underneath you and all of that jazz. Um, I'm going to see if I can find like a um, different examples. You can do like a pike press up. I've used these before. Um, I've actually used these little diagrams before, actually, on circuit cards myself. Um, see if I can get directly to this place. So this... So this would be an example of, like, a pike press-up. So your bum's a little bit higher and your shoulders are angled more towards the floor. Now that would challenge your shoulders more. Yeah. The more vertical you are with your head angled down towards the floor, the more that emphasis changes to your shoulders from your chest. Yeah. Cause again, it comes back to where is gravity and um, what angle is gravity affecting the body from? So if I'm flat on the floor, let's just use an example here. So, we're going to get a bit Doctor Strange with our uh, with our angles. So, assuming that this is the floor, this wall is the floor. If I'm pressing there, that's a very chest heavy exercise. Yeah, it's coming from my pecs. If I'm angled forwards like that, so when I press, this muscle comes out of the equation and it's much more shoulders. Yeah. So doing like a like an inverted press, an incline press, a pike press, you might have heard of it called. Um, lots of different names. Just if you want to make the emphasis more about your shoulders, um, angle yourself more down into the floor a little bit, if that makes sense. Um, so again, a couple of different examples. Health and safety always is going to be technique, guys, with body weight exercises. Um, there's, again, there's not really a right or a wrong way to make this harder or easier either. To make it easier, you would probably just take it a step back to those regular press-ups and everything else we talked about when we looked at those um, just a minute ago. In terms of making these harder, again, it might be that the next natural step up from, from these are a different exercise, you know? Say it might be a totally, totally different exercise that you go to, um, be it the one-handed press up or or um or whatever. Yeah. Um I think what I used to call them. There was an exercise that I used to do. It's gone, it's gone, it will come to us. Um it's just made us think that though, actually. Again, if you're in a plank, no. If you're in a, I mean, a press-up position is essentially the same thing. If you're in a press-up position, another way you might make those a little bit easier, um, instead of doing any pressing at all, might just be stay in that plank position and do shoulder taps. Yeah, so you've still got your upper body working. And you're just getting those shoulder taps in nice and quick. Um, that could be a way to um, make those a little bit easier as well. Mm -hmm. Wait a little noise. 
Um, right. Okay, then. Okay. So, yeah, in terms of upper body exercises, there's there's so so many um, that we'll be able to do body weight. Um, can I find that? G? what I used to call suicide planks. So it's, it's essentially, um, it's more of a tricep exercise than a chest exercise. So what you do, you'd be in a plank position on your toes, nice straight body line like we did when we looked at the plank, into that position, but then drop the elbows. Yeah, from there, plant your palms again, push up, back to your palms, back to elbows, back to palms, yeah? And it's all coming from that tricep. And again, it's a really, um, really good tricep exercise. Um, so just another upper body exercise we can do entirely with body weight there. Um, like I say, um, always going to be a focus of just making sure the technique's right. Um, when we're doing upper body, body weight stuff. Um Right, guys, right, moving on then, moving on. That's probably um, enough on body exercises. I've got a couple more. I've got a couple more, and you'll notice now, um, of course, it is difficult trying to get um, images that we can use, so I've actually been pulling off um, some pictures from our um, workout playlist on YouTube. So if you haven't seen these yet, this is uh, yours truly demonstrating a couple of exercises for you in those workout videos. So we've done a um, couple of lower body exercises, a couple of core or abdominal exercises. We've done upper body. So what are the benefits might we, might, what are the sort of um, categories might these body weight exercises fall into? Now, the biggest one, Aside from what we've looked at, is going to be our cardio-based stuff. Yeah, so we're going to have certain exercises that, yes, they're going to work certain muscles, but the main effect on the body is going to be that breathlessness, that that getting us out of breath, getting us tired, um, raising our heart rate, getting us, um, like I say, breathing heavier. Um, and that's what these sort of types of exercises do. Um the same as if you were running on a treadmill or doing sprints for like 30 seconds and then resting, you know, you might do sprints. Um, I have seen sprints used in circuits. So you're not running on the spot. You're actually sprinting down a gym or um, around a car park or around a sports hall or whatever it is. Um, it might be touching cones. You know, you might run out, touch that cone, come back, touch the wall where you started, go out further and touch the next cone and come back and further and come back. Yeah. So, um, there's different ways we can utilize that cardio or that running in our circuit training. Um, of course, one that we did talk about last week when we were talking about equipment that fits into the same sort of ballpark is things like um, obviously skipping and uh, we're skipping ropes and stuff like that, very cardio sort of based. Um, body weight, some of the most effective ones that you're going to see that do this are probably going to be things like high knees. So you're not just running on the spot, but you're actually getting that knee as high as you can every single step get it up try and get it sort of up and across your body to your elbow from the opposite side which is going to be coming round yeah so it's a cardio based exercise yeah you're getting a bit of a twist at your waist yes you've got to be working your calves because you're running on your toes the whole time but it's mainly that cardiovascular benefit that we're doing it for yeah so we've got our high knees um, so all you're doing really, it's, it is jogging on the spot, but getting your knees up as high as you can every single time. Yeah. So that might just be our, um, sort of, I, I say body weight, sort of cardio sort of effect. Um, okay then. Okay. So, um, with stuff like this, it's probably, it is equally, if not more so important to check the floor that you're going to be doing it on. Of course, with burpees, high knees, mountain climbers, there's jumping involved, there's movement involved. Um, so there is, of course, chance that you might slip um, or whatever. So 
like I say, if you're doing press ups, you're gonna know straight away whether you're doing press ups in a puddle, aren't you? Yeah. If you're running, you're not gonna know that there's a puddle there till it's too late. So that's the sort of thing we need to be wary of and keep our eyes out for. Um, right. Um health and health and safety. Anything else for health and safety? Proper footwear as always. Um, I would stay. And yeah, just because I did learn the hard way this day, don't necessarily go outside and exercise in the sun in the hottest day of the year. This was um, first lockdown, one of the nicest days we'd had in a while. I decided to film outside in the garden and the sun absolutely kicked my backside. So make sure that you, um, first of all, give the video a little watch and you can have a little giggle at my expense. But yeah, beyond that, um, yeah, you can see all of that on there as well. Um. But yeah, just bear in mind um, if we are going to be exercising. Um, circuit seems to be quite a popular form of exercise to do in the sun um, and is one of the most exhaustive types of exercises we can do. So be careful with that. Um, not necessarily officially um, official stuff to mention, but yeah, I definitely learned the hard way that day. Um, okay, guys. So that is... Um, Need any equipment, health and safety, regressions and progressions then. How would we make these easier or harder? So you could probably argue that to make them easier, just don't bring your knees as high or do the whole thing a little bit slower, take your time a little bit more. Yeah? Because um, again, a lot of the circuits that I've delivered over the years um, have tended to be for time. Yeah? Simply because if I've got 10 people all doing a circuit and moving around in the same direction, I need them to move at the same pace. Yeah. So if I say, right, this station is going to be 10 medicine ball slams and that's going to be 10 lengths of the hall, someone might take longer to do the medicine ball slams. The person does the lengths of the hall and they're like, well, I can't, I can't move on. Yeah. So when I've done circuits before, a lot of the time it has been two time. Yeah. Be it 30 seconds, 40 seconds, 60 seconds, whatever it is. So, yeah, um, just thinking about how long that set is going to be. And again, what you're asking people to do, is it really realistic that they can maintain that for how long you're asking them to? Um, so, yeah, sometimes with circuit training, a way of making it easier is just do a couple of reps less, rest if you need to sort of thing. Um, making them harder. Making them harder. When it comes to high knees, bar going faster and as fast as you can it's difficult to make them harder now of course the beauty of fast as you can is that it's going to be different for everybody someone who's been to the gym once and someone who's been coming for 10 years if they both go as fast as they individually can they should both be just as knackered yeah so with stuff like this you can say right faster do it faster um if it's too easy you know if i i don't i never ever wanted to see somebody sort of going through the motions plodding along taking their time with stuff like this and then go well that was easy like if it looks easy i'm going to be on top of you to be doing it faster and faster and faster yeah because that's one of the best ways to make them harder yeah um so high knees and the same applies for mountain climbers here, which we're going to look at in just a second, yeah? So we've got high knees. Um, like I say, mountain climbers um, work in a very similar sort of way. The only difference is you're doing essentially high knees combined with a plank, yeah? So you're working against gravity in that same way again um, when you are in that sort of plank position. And then, of course, we mentioned that if we're in a plank, lifting one foot off the floor makes it harder. So if we're doing something like this, so for a mountain climber, if you've never seen them before, you're coming to this plank position, then what you'll do, you'll lift one foot, but drive that knee across to the opposite elbow. Yeah, so it comes across your body, knee comes to elbow, and then back to start, put that foot down, swap your feet over and do the opposite with the opposite side. So we've still got that same movement going on. Oh, no hiccups. 
I still got that movement um coming up and across your body and uh, that knees driving across your body as well um in both of these exercises just i would say mountain climbers tend to be a little bit harder so that could be a natural sort of progression for high knees as well if someone's doing these and finds them too easy right let's do some mountain climbers then it's the same thing but essentially on the floor um okay then okay um so mountain climbers again you're going to work your abs harder than high knees because of your relationship with gravity um you're probably going to work your shoulders harder as well um Whereas this exercise, the high knees is definitely more cardio sort of based. This is more um, still cardio, but you're working your muscles harder as well, if that makes sense. Um, okay, so again, health and safety, space, technique, floor underneath you. Um, again, make these harder, speed them up, speed them up. Um, if someone's going as fast as they can for however long the timer goes for, they shouldn't really be getting to the end of it and going, oh, well, that was easy. Um, so, yeah, that was a big one to, to make these a little bit harder as well. Um, you might go as far as to turn them into a burpee. Maybe you want to keep burpees separate. Um, maybe you don't know what a burpee is, in which case, um, definitely check out. It was this video, actually. It was this specific video. Um because I remember doing burpees in the sun that day as well. So if you've never come across a burpee before, I definitely recommend that you go and research those and get familiar with those and what they look like as well. Um, okie dokie, okie dokie. So yeah, those are um, the two, two of the main use, I would say, sort of, um, cardiovascular exercises, be it mountain climbers um, or sort of running on the spot. If you want to evolve that into high knees, of course, um, you can do. Some people might just be better off running on the spot. Um, again, depends what you're making the modification for. Maybe people have got bad knees or ankles, in which case you would really need to slow it down. You know, it might be a case of right, not running on the spot. We want to reduce that impact. So what I want you to do is um, bring, same again, stand, but nice and slow. Bring your knee up and across, back to that start position, nice and slow, rather than doing it really fast or doing just high knees on the spot. Yeah. Um, so like I say, again, there is no right or wrong there would be some wrong progressions or regressions, um, but that's just more if um, it's got to be safe as well, obviously. Don't just make it hard and make sure that it's safe as well. Um, but yeah, like I say, nobody wants to come along and feel as though the whole thing's been too easy because, you know, I'm sure we all the time feel as though there's not enough time in the day. If we're going to carve out some time for ourselves and for, for some exercise, we want to make sure that it's um, worth it, really. Don't. I know um, I always do, for sure. Okay, guys, just a couple more exercises to look at. Um, and then I'm going to think about handing over to you guys to go away and not just have a think about your own exercises, um, but to start getting some stuff on paper um, and start to get some structure down to your circuit, um, including using those workbooks that you've had the last week or so to get familiar with. Um, obviously, I tried to show you at the end of last week's session, um, but it was um, there were some technical problems, so we didn't get to look at those workbooks. So if we end up with a bit of time today, then we can, um, but... If not, of course, you've got that time to look at those workbooks in your own time as well. If you're still missing any or you haven't got them, please let me know and I will um, get them over to you. Um, although they do tend to be linked in the description below the relevant session as well. Um, okay, then, okay. So that's spinning on. So we've done regressions, progressions. Let's get a look at um, a couple of 
some some sort of different exercises. So we've got one that is dedicated purely to exercising your bum. And we've got one that is um, more to do with, um, it's still a lower body exercise, similar to a lunge, but it encourages types of movement that we don't do day to day. As human beings, we do a lot of moving forwards, um, not so much moving side to side. Yeah, so we've got to get that balance a little bit as well and balance those muscles out as well. So the first one that we're looking at is a glute bridge. So it's a bridge for your glutes. So the clue is in the title there, and that is the muscle that we're working is going to be the bum muscle. Yeah, so glutes, bum muscle. Um, like I mentioned earlier on, biggest single muscle in the body as well. So... Um, is a good way to burn more calories, but also it's a good way to isolate your glutes. If you do a squat, yes, your glutes are active, but your quads are also working as well. You might want to do an exercise where it's just the glutes working by themselves to really challenge them. So, a little description then. How do we do a glute bridge? So I've always said, um, lay yourself flat on your back, um, with your legs straight, then bend your knees and bring your heels up towards your bum. Probably the closer, the better, because you want your knee over your heel. Yeah? You don't want your knee here, but your heel out there. Yeah? So you want your feet in nice and close to your bum. Maybe it's a little bit wider than hip width. And then you want to be... Um, like I say, knee directly over your heel. Yeah. From there, dig through your heel, push your bum, up, uh, push your hips up towards the ceiling. So you can do it a couple of different ways. Um, and again, harder, easier, might change from person to person. So I find it easier to do up and down. Yeah. So hips up towards the ceiling, bum down to the floor, hips back up to the ceiling. Yeah, it's probably going to make it harder in terms of a progression to hold this for the whole set. Like we talked about with squats, where holding this position for 40 seconds is a, going to be harder than doing a squat for 40 seconds. It's exactly the same with these. Holding that position for 40 seconds is going to be harder than moving in and out of that position. Yeah, because again, if you come all the way down and let your bum rest on the floor your muscles are resting. So you've got that brief second for them to recover and get ready to go again. Um, so yeah, I would say coming into this hold position makes it harder. Increasing how long they rest at the bottom might make it easier. You could also give somebody a weight to play, sort of hold over their hips. So if you could rest it on your hips, again, every time you're thrusting your hips up towards the ceiling, um, you're working against the extra weight there as well. Um, so just a couple of ways we can make it harder, like I say, easier. Um, just give yourself a little bit more of a rest at the bottom or don't lift your hips quite so high. For total beginners, just focus on lifting your hips and coming back down. Same as with the press, uh, sit up really, depending on how far you need to regress. If you're doing them for the first time, lay yourself down. Set yourself up as far as you can and then come down and rest. Yeah. And eventually you get stronger and that range will increase as well. Okay then. Okay. So that is a, a glute bridge. We've got our description. We know how to do a diagram. You might want to put um, an exercise mat underneath you if you've got one available. Um, just give you a little bit more padding. Um. But yeah, in terms of health and safety, that's probably the big one. Again, just make sure it's comfortable for lying down. Make sure you're not in anybody else's way. Um, there's nothing that can fall on you sort of thing. Um, yeah, happy days. Maybe don't do this directly with your head under head under that bookshelf you just put up or something like that. But um, yeah, body weight exercises, like I say, a lot of it's just going to be technique and checking your environment around you really. 
Um, okay, then. Then we've got a um, a lateral lunge. So, like I mentioned earlier on, lunges have different. Um, you've got different types of lunges. You can do side lunge. You can do sort of um, traveling lunges, wide lunges, reverse lunges, forward lunges. There's so many different types of lunges, but one of my favorites is the is the lateral lunge because, like I say, as human beings, we have the capability to move side to side obviously we're not crabs that's not the first thing that we do it's not our first choice but we have muscles that let us do that as well so if we don't ever use those muscles they get neglected they get weaker um and can cause problems later on in life as well and um, especially with balance and stuff like that because muscles just might never not get used for years decades even um then you lose your balance a little bit. That muscle tries to fire and it's like, well, I've been retired for 20 years. And um, yeah, yeah, you end up injured. So we've got to make sure that we look after all of those muscles, even the ones that don't necessarily um, jump out at us in the mirror or look good on the old gram. Um, so a, a lateral lunge. The way that I would do it, start in your normal lunge position, take a step out to one side, um, and slowly lean and transfer your weight onto that foot, making sure that sure that yeah, making sure that your toes are pointing about a forty five degree angle. Yeah, as we can see here, um, this foot's kind of pointing still the direction it started. This foot is pointed out. It's not facing this way. It's not entirely that way. It's somewhere in between. Yeah, and again, that's just to help, help to protect knees. Make sure we get a good stretch on the inside of the thigh um, and making sure that we are really challenging the outside of the thigh as we push back across. Yeah. Um, okay, then. Okay, so um, our reverse, uh, our lateral lunge, we know why we would do it. We know the benefit. The muscles that we're working are still going to be the quads and the glutes, just more the outside of the quads and the glutes. Yeah, as opposed to... Um, the, the top of your thigh or the bottom of your, of your glute, which works more during a straight forward movement, a squat, or even cycling, going up a step uses your quads and your bum. Um, so it's nice to get that little mix, isn't it? It's nice to get that balance in there, make sure that we're working our body nice and evenly, like I say. I always tend to think of our muscles as like a series of elastic bands. And if you pull one too tight, it can make others too tight as well. So we want to make sure we've got that good, holistic, sort of balanced approach to training. Um, okay, so health and safety. With glute braid, uh, with lateral lunges, definitely make sure that there's no pressure on your knees um, and that you're not on too slippy a surface because if you take a big step, put your weight onto that foot and then it slips, again, you might end up pulling your groin or, or hurting yourself that way as well. Um, so lots of, um, as we, we can start to see now that there's there's lots of different ways that we might make an exercise easier or, or harder. Um, and it, it, isn't, it massively depends on the reason why we need to make that change, doesn't it? Is it because someone's injured? Is it because they're struggling with the range or the weight um, or just the technique in general? Um like I say, we need sometimes find times where we need to make things harder as well. And it is just getting that balance right because everybody's different. You might have some people that are happy to come along and it'd be too easy. Um, there might be the odd one that comes along and wants to train to 100% and feel like they're going to pass out every single week. But the majority of people, um, probably yourself included, are going to be somewhere in between. You want to just just write that 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 Goldilocks zone almost of it's not too tough, it's not too easy, um, it feels challenging but achievable at the same time. It's realistic, um, and that's kind of the sweet spot that a lot of people try and operate in. Um, so again, depend on person to person, but think about yourself when you're writing your own circuit cards. Just think about your own situation. Why might you need to make things easier or harder? Um, because the the person who's probably going to get the most out of your circuit cards may well be you. You know, um, I've recommended this a couple of times, especially over the last couple of years. You might as well plan yourself a circuit that you might be able to use at home as well. 
You know, you might be able to use um your circuit cards to go through a little circuit at home in 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever it is. Um, you might pick 10 exercises, a minute on each. It's a 10 minute circuit, guys. Yeah, you can do it as many times as you want. Um, but even just doing it once. So think about your own circumstances. Think about any injuries, any anything that might dictate I need to do this differently or I need to change this up. Um, you know, like I say, especially looking at these exercises, you, you are going to have cases where you need to just swap an exercise for a totally different one. Yeah, that will come up. But having an idea how to make them harder, easier, but also kind of still specific to what they were doing in the first place is going to be really helpful. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, right. What else then? What else? So that I would say, let's go back. Let's go back. And look at what our plan was for the day. So name of exercises we've covered. Muscles used. Pretty sure we've covered that on every single one we've gone through. If there's any that we've missed, please let me know. Um, if you've got any exercises that you've come across yourself, you know, the likes of Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, and you're not sure how safe they are, how applicable they are, um, if they're suitable for you, again, by all means, get in touch and ask. I'm, I'm always happy to help and try and give a little bit of guidance, especially when it comes to getting a little bit more active, hopefully in ways that we enjoy um, and certainly in ways that are safe and sustainable. That's for sure. Um, so hopefully... At the very least, by now, we're starting to get some ideas of um, what we'd like to put on our circuit cards, um, what exercises we're interested in using, what exercises, you know, maybe is not so much. Um, but, yeah, starting to get an idea of um, what your circuit's going to look like um, and really what your circuit cards are going to look like as well. Yeah, because as we'll see, um, in a in a future session where we get to look at uh, we'll look at some examples that other learners have done in the past, um, we can see that of course everybody's going to be totally different. Everybody's going to have a different style, design, layout. You know, do what you want with them, make them quirky, make them um, make them you. Um, yeah, just have a, by all means have a, have a little trial and error. Try a couple of styles if you don't like them. But yeah, hopefully we're starting to get some ideas how we want our circuit cards to look and, and what needs to be on them, really. We've covered a lot of exercises this morning. There are so, so many other bodyweight exercises out there. We could be here. We could have spent all 10 sessions just talking about different exercises we could do. So I, I, I always encourage you to go away and look and explore by yourself, be it looking on like I say, social media, websites like bodybuilding.com um, where they've got exercise libraries you can look through and make sure you, you've got a, a wide range of exercises to pick from. Um, hey guys, there's so much out there. Um, maybe you've seen somebody do something in the gym yourself that you're not sure of what the benefit is, why they're doing it, how you would do it themselves uh, yourself. Like I say, by all means, um, drop, me a, drop me a message. As always, guys, my email is in the um, description below today's video in the little description box linked with our um, social pages as well. So Insta, um, Facebook, Twitter, and I want to say LinkedIn as well. And we are developing. I don't know whether we're quite there yet and whether we're live, but we are developing a... Um, Oh, it's gone, man. It's gone. It'll come back to us. It'll come back to us. Um, right, guys. Right, 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 right. So we've got our body weight exercises. Um, yes, we are, and that was it. Yeah, we are developing a um TikTok channel as well um so i don't know whether that's linked yet but keep your eyes peeled for that and like i say give us a little follow even if you just want to know um what courses are coming up and going to be available anything to do with the digital skills side of things um 
and any of the digital courses, um, or even just want to know when Diego's is going to be open so you can come in and have your first cup of tea or coffee or even a hot chocolate in there. Um, so yeah, make sure that you're up to date with everything media savvy. Um, and and like I say, just got your finger on the pulse with all of that stuff. Um, right, guys, because we've got a little bit of time, I just want to boot up these workbooks and we can have a look just so you know what it is that you're looking for. But over the next week, again, we're going to be thinking about um, just getting familiar with those two workbooks again and just continuing um, to look through. And if there's bits that you're confident filling in, by all means do. Yeah, by all means, uh, fill in any bits. If you've got some solid ideas down for the circuits, um, but I'm just going to... Um, Load these up quick so we can have a quick little look. Level two, four, three. Resources, tools and materials. Right. Here's open. I don't get the... Uh, wasn't a blue screen last week. I've got a black screen. No, I was still... It was still on. I just lost visual. Um, right, so hang on. If I go to share this instead, this is what you guys should be seeing now. Just make sure the stream gets caught up. There we go. Yeah, you guys are there. So we're looking at. Um, There we go. This is the one. So, tools and equipment for a practical activity. It's done health and safety. Um, so, yeah, it's all going to be for, um, going to be filling in stuff to do with your circuit, really. So, over time, we'll be putting in what equipment you're going to be used. Uh, be using how you're going to use it and why you're going to be using it like what 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 benefit um we'll be doing um safety precautions to do with um some of the fitness kit that we've looked at and then this is where you're going to um be planning your circuit here so up to 10 stations and a minimum of six stations so we need a minimum of six exercises you're going to go on, uh, we're going to use exercise uh, equipment, sorry, for at least two of them. Yeah, so at least two are going to have equipment. The rest can be body weight. So a minimum of six, maximum of 10, at least two are going to be body, uh, are going to be equipment. Yeah, so you can write them in, put the equipment in here, put the exercise in there. And from there, leading into next week's session and what we did a little bit last week, looking at um, caring for equipment, safety precautions. And then once we've done your circuit cards, we can fill in the rest of that book. And then this second workbook here is to help you with your circuit cards, yeah? It's all to do with your circuit cards. So there's an example of one done in the past. So as we can see, we've got the number in the circuit. Keeps it nice and straightforward. If you've done two, you know that you're moving on to three next. The name of the exercise, a little diagram. The name of the equipment being used. The name of the muscles being used. Um, a nice little description of how to do the exercise. A couple of sentences. Um, safety tips as well. Yeah, so pick up, pick the right weight um, and do your best to ensure a correct form. Yeah. And then again, once those circuit cards are done, I can give you a little bit of feedback on those and get that book filled in. Um, so we should still be... Um, Looking at our PowerPoint now, all being well. So, yeah, I'm just going to cycle back through to this 
last page so you know what your homework is. It is, of course, to just get used to those um, workbooks. Think about your own training session and think about the exercises you're going to use and the equipment that you will be using as well. And then from next week, we can complete some of the workbooks and plan the design of your own circuit training cards, guys. So exciting times. Bit arts and crafts. Let's um, get some pen to paper and start to get some ideas down for these um, circuit cards as well. Um, okay, guys. So as I've mentioned earlier on, don't forget about the um, Media Savvy Workout Playlist, not just to help you pick out some exercises for your circuit, um, also as a resource that you can use to keep fit and active at home. I know we are um, supposedly um, probably somewhere between spring and summer, if not closer to summer by now. doesn't look like it today, but uh, that, that, that's where we are. So the weather is hopefully going to be a bit more reliable, but like I say, it's nice to have um, options to exercise safely indoors with a bit of instruction. You've not got to think about what it is that you do and you don't have to plan your circuit press play do what the uh do what the guy on the video says uh, for about half an hour and you'll be done pretty much um as well like i say it's a free resource out there as well shareable to family and friends as well so by all means do um share those with anybody that you think you know might need a little bit of help getting more active um a little bit of inspiration or even just a little bit of um information really for getting themselves a little bit more active again um okay guys okay so uh, as always please don't forget to do the survey for this week's session that'll be linked in the description below today's session um as always uh, we need one to do in for each session of the course um so yeah make sure that we're up to date with those guys and uh, those are getting done each week it's not even a minute click the link Enter uh, your answers, click submit, and it comes straight back to us. Um, no downloading it, saving it, filling it in, saving it, sending it back, uploading it. None of that. Yeah, none of that. Um, brings me out in the cold sweat sometimes thinking about having to do that. But this is nice and straightforward. Um, so, yeah, guys, please make sure to get that done. As always, if you need anything, uh, especially before next week's session, um, hit me up. Um, my email's on the screen there. It's probably also in the... Um, description below the video next to that survey as well um as well as uh, the link to today's fitness video so the one that i've picked for today is a little bit upper body, a little bit lower body a little bit core so you can see a good range of exercises um as well as you know how you would make them harder easier um and so on um but yeah as always guys that link takes you straight to the playlist so if you're wanting to do a little bit of a stretch today, if you want to work your abs, if you want to just do legs and bum, follow that link and it'll take you to the playlist. And there is a little bit of something on there for everybody, guys. Um, and of course, as always, let me know how you get on. Um, of course, the fitness video you don't have to do right now. You can save it for later in the week, a different time of day when you've got a little bit more time. Um, but yeah, guys, we're on week five. Let's be trying to just increase our activity levels that little bit. Even if we're aiming for a daily step target, you know, are we aiming for um, set yourself a bare minimum, set yourself something you know you can reach, aim for 500, aim for 1,000, and then build it up once you start hitting that target. Yeah. Um, okay, guys, okay. Um, I'll let you get away and enjoy the rest of your day, evening, afternoon, whenever you are catching this back. You know how to get in touch with me if you need me in the meantime. Um, and if not, guys, I'll see you for next week's session, next Monday. We'll be back 10 o'clock again um, to continue working on those circuit cards and padding them out a little bit um, and continuing our fitness journey. Um, okay, guys. So until then, I hope everybody has a good week. Stay safe. Take care of yourself and those around you. And we'll be back next Monday to do it all again. Um, until then, guys, take care and I'll see you later.